Hi, this is George Cow, and today I'm with Anne Marie Pizarro, and we're going to be talking about soul contracts, the Akashic records, and sort of how our spiritual uh, journey and entrepreneurship um, mix together. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's great to be here, George. Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to just uh, share your bio, your background with everyone, and then we'll get into the topics. So let's see here. Anne Marie Pizarro helps entrepreneurs, holistic practitioners, and creative agents receive answers and tools for their life's most pressing questions through the Akashic Records and the human energy field. And we're going to talk about both of those things in this conversation. Anne brings 20 years of nursing experience and 15 years of entrepreneurship uh, to blend practical suggestions with spiritual guidance. She has created several online businesses and digital courses over the years, and her goal is to empower and support people's journey on earth by helping them discover patterns and core issues that are blocking their soul's growth and success. So, and there's so much we can talk about, and we don't have a very long conversation, unfortunately, so I'm just going to get right into it. Um, People who are watching this may have heard of the Akashic Records, but for those who don't, or it's just good to have a, a kind of a refresher on how do you describe the Akashic Records? I would have to describe the Akashic Records as the universe's supercomputer that holds data on all human souls' experiences on Earth. So that includes memories, past lives, thoughts, feelings, experiences, contracts, patterns. Those are all held in the Akashic Records in the form of data. And it's accessible to everyone as long as you can open the door, whether it's through a prayer, through meditation. And it's in accessing that data that we begin to understand why we're here, what we're here to do, and what we're here to accomplish in this time. That's great. And you have uh, online courses about the Akashic Records and how people can access that. I think you even have a particular online course for business owners, right? Like how do you access the Akashic Records in regards to your business direction and your... Absolutely. So well, that's definitely, you know, I'll include links below that can help people get there. But um, one of the things you mentioned uh, just in your description here is um, soul contracts or contracts. Um, tell us what you mean by soul contracts. So soul contracts are essentially the agreements that we make with ourselves and with other people when we come down on this plane. And we have different kinds of contracts when it comes to relationships, with our money, with our health, with our work. So contracts are essentially just agreements. These are agreements based on us coming down here, making decisions, utilizing free will to influence the nature of these contracts. Some of these contracts get resolved. We live in a state of peace. Some of these contracts don't get resolved. And there's always a little bit of an irritation when it comes to that subject matter. But that's essentially part of the lessons that we're here to experience. Mm, it's interesting. So uh, what causes contracts to be resolved or not resolved? I guess part of the question is, how do we know what soul contracts we have? I think that's a great question. I think the best way to address contracts is to step back and look at what's happening in your life and look at the elements that are in your life. So when you start off with your family, well, you obviously have an agreement or contract to deal with each other, look at the relationships and either have a great life or forgive past wrongdoings. These lessons are here because as human beings, we're really here to evolve into grace, into a greater sense of love. And these happen for us to reach a higher state of awareness. When we have contracts around our work or our health, these are the actions that we take to influence our lives. Some contracts may resolve in ways that we don't like. For example, with illness, some people who have autoimmune diseases may have a contract to have that perspective of living with something versus fighting and resisting that contract, which continues to have this lessener pattern where you're just not at peace. So these contracts can be sometimes left over when you don't resolve certain agreements. So if forgiveness, for example, was a challenge that you had with a family member, but you just never get to that 
point where you forgive them, there's a leftover contract where you may have to come back in another time. You may have to meet with each other again. And there's now this pre-existing agreement that even biases how your initial relationship are, which is why they're there for you to work on. Hmm. So how do we know if we're on track with our contracts? I feel like you're on track with your contracts when you get to a place of neutrality hmm. around okay. how you feel about it. And I'll, yeah. I'll share this as a big contract we have with money. A lot of people are triggered by money. And especially now during this economy, there's a fear around money. When we really look at the big, big picture of what feeds us, well, then our initial contract isn't so much about money. It's about our contract with source to provide. And there are many times when we, when we have a chance to heal that contract, we resolve how we look at money, how we relate to money, and we upgrade how we even use and work with money. You evolve to look at money as numbers and you become neutral versus when your contract still exists and looking at your bank account triggers you to feel lack or you start to worry about, am I going to have enough? And maybe I'm downplaying that contract in terms of its immense influence in people's lives. Yet when you can start to resolve that question around money, you can go to the really bigger question of what really sustains me. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's good. So it's like this sense of peace around that particular issue. Absolutely. Um, and how do you help your clients get to that sense of peace? When we work together, it is through their questions where the answers and the tools show up. When the people I work with receive either support or uh, approval on their thought or ideas, they relax into themselves and their path, or they're given tools and action steps to take so that when you're doing something in your life and you see little tiny results, something in you feels like, I'm finally on the right path. Or just to be able to have this sense of, you're doing good. You're doing good right now. And that's all you need to step into is just being aware that you're doing okay. And that's more than enough to allow the answers and the insights and the genius to show up. Those three ways really helps a person feel empowered in just making decisions and choices in their life. And that helps me to be able to see a sense of satisfaction and knowing that people can make empowered decisions because they have what I call informed consent. Yeah. One of the things um, I uh, said in, in, the, uh, in your bio, uh, one of the phrases was the human energy field. Okay. Uh, I'd love for you to tell us what you mean by that. So the human energy field actually is a field that encapsulates all of us. Hmm. What we see is just the physical body, the dense layer. But if you were to actually look at us under other light m microscopes, telescopes, things like that, you would actually see light. And light that we emit is connected to our physical layer, our emotional layer, our mental layer, our spiritual layer. So many people who are walking around earth are actually these five to six, sometimes 20 foot balls of light that is known as the human energy field. And these human energy field, they're constantly blending with each other. So there's this interaction, this communication that happens between your fields. You probably noticed going to the grocery store, you feel one way. And then as you're standing in line, all of a sudden you just start to feel irritated and upset. And you're like, what triggered that? Well, something in your field picked up on somebody else's irritation because maybe something wasn't going well with their day. And now it's come down to the emotional layer and your physical body and now you feel that so this is the reason why people who are empathic who are sensitive who are psychic who are intuitive have a very close connection to their human energy field because by the time it comes to their body they have this whole sensory system that's picking up on information data it's processing constantly for us to be able to reflect react and respond mm -hmm. Wow. And I, I'm so curious now, nowadays when we are doing so much of our interactions virtually, like over Zoom and things like that, 
to, I'm curious if the field, the, since, since the field is, um, you know, besides our physical body, there, it's kind of more spiritual, etheric, or uh, transcends maybe physical location. I don't know. I mean, so is, is, there, is there a field interaction when there's a um, virtual meeting? That's the beauty of remote work. George, okay. and that's mm -hmm. really, I think, the power that technology brings us in this time is that energy practitioners, holistic practitioners, readers like myself, I can connect with people all over the world. And as soon as I tap in, our fields are connected. We're working in the Akashic Records of the same field. When we're working with energy work, we're in the same field. I recently received energy clearing for myself. That was just last week. This woman was in Louisiana. I was here in Texas. She was doing some energy clearing on me and I could see and feel it. This is the reason why we're not that separate from one another, yeah. you know, and technology yeah. just makes it even more so that the, the illusion of separation is just that it's a perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. powerful times. Yeah, it is. Um, another uh, concept that, that is central to your work is you, you talk about the framework, you know, the framework that we're here to, to, to you know, pursue or to work with. Uh, maybe say more about that. I think that's a great question. This is, there's a reason why we're drawn to the work that we do. There's yeah. a reason why you're drawn into this framework of being this business coach to see and support all of these entrepreneurs. And there's a reason why I'm drawn to this fr framework of service. And before it was in a nursing framework, and now it's in this holistic practice framework. Well, I've seen how this framework has existed for many lifetimes, whether it's been in uh, meditation or work in the Akashic Records, I've been able to see where this is a framework that has existed in a lot of different lives where I'm somehow giving support to others in some kind of service. And when I look at this framework, it holds all the information of both past, present, and future. So in this framework, there are moments when I've experienced wild success, and there are also frameworks when I've experienced abysmal poverty and failure. So what screws in the framework together is sacred geometry. And when we start to work with understanding who we are as beings with the human energy field that is really connected to light, data, source information, we carry within us the framework of everything we've ever wanted. That means success in relationships, success in our work, the ability to reach people, the ability to help people, the ability to heal our bodies, the ability to ascend spiritually, the ability to tap into all kinds of knowledge and to learn anything and everything. Wow. Wow. So say more about this. You, you mentioned sacred geometry. How, how does that tie in? So when you look at yourself as a human energy field, you're actually this sacred geometrical image known as the flower of life. The flower of life is what I call creator's imprint on earth to let us know of this communal relationship we have with source. Because when you look at the Akashic Records as a universal computer, there is the universal programmer. And that's the creator who creates this language, which is also similar to computer language, binary language, zeros, ones, as well as even these frameworks. There exists in this very ancient relationship a way that sacred geometry maps out our lives. So we contain within us sacred geometrical codes. When we look at uh, da Vinci's man, the Vesuvius man, he also maps out the ratios, the golden mean ratios. And what I discovered is the golden mean number, pi, all these repetitive numbers, they're like the screws for the framework. And the framework is essentially how we are living our lives on earth, utilizing our access to all that knowledge and that data that's encoded and embedded in us, both not only in our DNA, but also our Akashic records and our holographic DNA. So did I, am I on a tangent? No, I feel no, like this I'm is like good. No, I mean, you're, you're journey. <laughs> no, I mean, you're, uh, cause you have, you understand this stuff so well that you're able to 
kind of speak to it. And there is a lot underneath, you know, kind of every sentence that you speak, actually. And I wonder, do you have a course that gives um, an overview? And maybe that's several courses. But do you, what, do you, is there an online course that you teach that kind of teaches the, the, the theory of all this or it how is. it all fits together? There is. There is a course that I actually taught last year called um, Sacred Geometry and Light okay. Language. Okay, and cool. I, there's so many videos on Sacred Geometry. There's a lot of information, but the perspective I take you on is the information that I channeled from the Akashic Records that talks about the creator. What was the original geometer's plan? Why did he replicate from one circle into two circles, which then birthed out all of life? So it takes you on the journey of the circles, and then it takes you on a journey of the triangles. And it, when you start to apply, and this is the key, when you start to apply sacred geometry to your life, for your work, your relationships, and what that really means is this. Take, for example, an octahedron, an octagon, a diamond. This is a very important shape because this represents as above, so below. So let's say you have a very important project that you want to bring down, manifest on earth, and make an impact. I'll use my sacred geometry class, for example. It's a digital course. So I would put the name of that digital course inside of an octagon. I would even color that as either a color green because that's about people loving it or purple for people to get it with their mind, their sixth, their, uh, sixth chakra. And when you utilize that octagon as a sacred geometrical symbol and you put the name of your project inside, what you're telling the creator, what you're telling the universe is make this connect from above to below and manifest on the material plane so that people will feel the impact of it and learn so you could put that thing for any kind of thing when you use different shapes and that's what the sacred geometrical class does is it makes sacred geometrical images applicable and usable for your life and where to place them in your home so it blends in a little touch of feng shui and helps you to start using geometry as a next level expression it's like putting into prayer intention requests using geometry as a code. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and one of the things that, um, I know I'm br we're bringing in a lot of concepts here, but I, I just wanted to give people a sense of the scope of your work, which um, of course we're only tapping into a little bit of it because there's, there's other things you do. So um, there's, this, there's this relationship also be between framework and time that I, I want you to speak to just a little bit here, the past, present, future, et cetera. Man, I think time is such a neat idea that exists here on this three-dimensional plane. Because when we look at how time is compared to other models of time, we just don't really know what time it is. The fact that we can sync up to meet on a certain time at the same time is a miracle of its own. And that's really the beauty of the work that I love so much in the Akashic Records is that when everything exists in the past, present, and future at the same time, and you're living within your framework of your life, then there exists certain timeless lessons or principles. And when you get to apply that, whether it's in a past experience, let's say you're having to deal with something as elemental as anger, this is something that I think a lot of human beings experience. I know I experience anger different times in my life, yet the reasons why we have to experience that is that we're here to actually practice forgiveness. So forgiveness has a timelessness to it that you bring from past lives. And as you apply that forgiveness into this current model, it influences the future framework. And so it's a bit of a ripple effect around because if you're living with time concurrently then you're really realizing that there's no sense of time and you're just doing the work in the present moment you utilize the numbers as a structure but you don't let that structure necessarily rule the flow of how you do your work i do definitely respect when you put yourself accountable to a certain time to meet for a time that's important. That's you holding yourself up to a particular code, having an integrity of how you carry yourself. I love utilizing the Time Lords to work with time because the Time Lords are a group of beings that 
work with this field of energy known as time. So when you're traveling, you can actually say, hey, time lords, would you help me bend time and let me get to my destination by this time? I've consistently used this practice for years and I'll show up at my destination within one to five minutes of that time, almost consistently. But when I ask for them to help me, then they're asking me to help them and relax into the journey and not be mad at other drivers or be like, Arr! it's when you ask them to bend time, then you're saying, okay, I'm gonna relax into it because when you relax into that time, it appears. Wow, that's a very uh, interesting and practical example. That's really cool. You can use it for writing. Yeah, yeah. You so know, maybe you can say, Time Lords, make this 30 minutes of writing be concise, clear, and to the point and badass. And so when you're done, you're just like, whew, and you walk away, and there's just this sense of like, you shrug it off. Mm, that's, you know? That's amazing. Yeah, there's so much that this can be applied to. Um, so maybe we can end um, on a very, you know, continuing on this practical note. So what kinds of what kinds of actions uh, should we, should we be taking to kind of align with our our purpose? You know, uh, sort of the, the the outcome that we are here to experience uh, in our in our work, our you know, health, relationships, that kind of stuff. And just kind of is there a, is there a framework for that? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I would, I would encourage um, everyone to create a framework for them that works for them. And it creates a personal practice. This is the discipline of you doing the things that sustains and feeds you. When you're sustaining yourself through meditation, through journaling, through intention building, you're really putting your focus on the things that are most important to you. That includes your health, your relationships, your wealth. And so I encourage everyone to even carve out 20 minutes to have some kind of a practice of tuning in to spirit, to listen, to write even just your affirmations for what you want in your life and practice a little bit of EFT to tap it in, embed that in. Because when you repeat over and over in your framework, I'm happy, healthy, loved, supported, and whole, you can't live in contradiction. So when you tap and you state that out loud and you're aligned to your guides to just feel restful and confident in that, that is the reality that you live every day and nothing can shake you. Things will happen in the world, but that's the foundation. And that's really when you enter into that timelessness of living in that next level of awareness with spirit and your work. Thank you for that, San. So for, um, for those who want to follow up with you on your work, um, you, uh, you, you do one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions, but you're usually booked out several months. So um, you know, people can inquire if they want to, if they're willing to wait. But for those who want to get started on kind of learning your um, ideas and your strategies, uh, you have some online courses that you. You know, you're actually creating them more as as we go but um do you want to speak to any particular i mean we've talked about the sacred geometry one so for sure people should check that out any other ones you want to mention i would encourage um you if you're interested to try the sacred geometry class more importantly consider connecting to your soul council and your business council okay, your soul yeah. council are essentially your personal guides that Give you guidance along the way throughout your day and it's sort of a conversation should i do this what do you think i should do this your business council is slightly different because their focus is really more on finances marketing operations customer service their job is to really help you get into that framework of what you've done before what you've done well what you innately know how and what to do and what you need to learn in order to get to that next activation of your framework. So your business council, my business council really helps to guide what I create, what work I need to do, and when I need to take breaks. And so I'm looking forward to this time frame coming up because I'm getting a break and they're like, you deserve it. So I'm like, woo! Yeah. And you have a course on uh, connecting to one's business council. Absolutely. This yeah. is a free gift I'd like to offer to um, not only the Master Heart community, but also anyone who's ready to work with their business council because 
you know, we're in a time of need right now. Some people might feel like their pennies are pinched. And so don't let that be a deterrent to connecting to your guides so that your work can improve in the world. Start tapping in, have that meeting, have a conference call with your guides once a quarter, once a month, and have some sense of direction of where to go in your business. Because when you do apply that, it just makes your work more streamlined. You relax into what you're here to do and you actually prevent yourself from over creating, overworking. So I'll be sure to put the link. Thank you for that gift. Uh, I'll put the link in the notes of the video. So folks, be sure to check that out. Thank you so much, Anne, for the work that you do. Um, uh, you know, your clients are happy and no wonder you're booked out several months, but uh, thank you for creating these online courses so that people can kind of get started right away, get that foundational knowledge, get those foundational practices so that if they then choose to work with you, they can go even further um, with their with their journey. So thank you so much, Anne. And um, yeah, I hope people will uh, go to the links now and kind of get started. Anything else you want to say? Any words of encouragement as we conclude? Well, I just encourage you all to take good care of yourself. And please, 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 you worked so hard to get here on this plane. Don't put yourself down. Don't put your work down. Just keep thinking of how awesome you are and what you're here to deliver and share with the world. So just remember that and keep your eyes on that prize. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anne. Appreciate yeah. you.